My friend Field Yates tweeted an incredible stat this weekend. Since the 1950 season, just one quarterback has over 1,000 passing yards and completed over 75% of his passes in his first four starts. That man, Jake Browning. And there was a little bit more this week. I know I denied it, and there's some great people over there. It's completely different, <laughs> completely different coaching staff and, and everything. And I want to emphasize, like, there are some incredible people over there. But that one, that one felt good. I think right after we made the field goal to win the game, I screamed at a camera. Colt, you've been in this exact situation before. What's it like to come off the sideline cold and then, you know, ask to magically get hot? <laughs> it's tough. And I tell you what, Jake Browning is a stud. Like, he's done it um, week to week over the last three weeks, like in big games. I mean, these these games are so meaningful for the Bengals. Right now he's got them in position to make the playoffs. And it's because of plays like this, right? The one thing you, you'll see when you watch this tape is Minnesota pressures them, heats him up. Literally the whole game, five man rushes, six man rushes, um, cover two zones behind it, man coverage behind it, like, like all kinds of crazy amounts of pressure um, by Flores. But this is a great play, right? Obviously, you don't know where the rush is coming from. Harrison Smith is down on the edge. You know, potentially you're getting heated up from both edges. You know, post high look probably not going to stay post high look when you break down the Vikings. They're normally not going to show you what the coverage is until the ball snap. Really nice job by Jake. This guy should be blocked, right? Joe Mixon misses bar in the hole right here. And Jake Browning just takes a breath, kind of sidesteps the rush and takes a negative play and turns it into a positive play, right? This is a coach's nightmare when you send the protection the right way. Okay, hey, we're blocking here. Center's ID there. We're down and we're down. Or, or sorry, he's out. Now Joe Mixon has this guy, right? Well, when this plays out, it's like everybody does it right, and Joe's like, yeah, which way to go, boss? Which way to go? I didn't see him. And then, you know, Jake is sneaky athletic and then throws the ball to the guy who missed the block. Right. I'm sure when they go in the film, they're like, come on, man, you're 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 rewarding a guy who like did everything wrong. And now it's like now it's right. Now it's third and one. So um, not hating on Joe Mixon here by any means, but just want to show you that like Jake Browning is a pretty sneaky athletic dude. And. You know, anytime you can take like a potentially negative play and turn it into a positive play, you know, we need to highlight that. Yeah, we don't highlight many three-yard gains on the show, Colt, but I think this one's important, right? Second and four gets you to third and one instead of a third nine after a sack, and it's after a brutal first half where they couldn't get anything going. A missed long catch here, a sack for 14 yards there, another missed touchdown throw down the middle of the field. Again, a 17-3 to deficit in your fourth career NFL start. And this play kind of spurs them again in multiple touchdown drives, ultimately come back and win against a very aggressive and very exotic defense that Brian Flores trots out there. I think the adjustments that Zach Taylor and Callahan made at halftime were tremendous, right? They're getting heated up over and over and over. And I think they said, let's go 12 personnel. Let's get two tight ends on the field because that creates five bigs in the Minnesota's in Minnesota's defense, right? And it eliminates some of the pressure, some of the exotic looks that they're getting. I love this right here. They they're gonna go empty and they're gonna move the pocket. You know, one thing you do when you're getting heated up over and over is you, the last thing you want for a guy in his third start is to just drop back after drop back after drop back, just standing on the same spot, right? So, you know, to start this play, right, it's a six man box, right? We call this basically double A gaps with the linebackers and you only have five blockers. Okay. So, uh, you know, somebody's going to be free if nothing changes right now. So, you know, they build in the ability for Jake to bring the receiver down. Now all of a sudden you can go six on six in protection. And the way this works is they're just going to roll every, everybody to the left. Jake Browning, instead of throwing on this hash, 
he's going to roll and throw from this hash, right? And it's a cool concept. Pretend like you're going to block there. Pretend like you're going to block there. And let's throw a flat route to our best player, Jamar Chase, right? I like the scheme. Good play design. When you move the pocket with Jake Browning, he pumps the flat route. And then these stutters, which you see a lot, convert to goes. And the coverage the Vikings had on right here is a version of cover two. And here's the tricky part about the Vikings defense is when you play Flores and these guys, like whatever you see pre-snap is not going to be what the coverage is post-snap. You know, you guys have watched this show a, a long time, all year. Like, tell me where the safeties are right here. There's no safety, so it feels like cover zero. Man, 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 man. No safeties, okay? Now, as you watch this play out, Jake Browning feels pressure. He motions the receiver down. They go six-man protection, and now this actually turns into a version of cover two, okay? This corner becomes a half-field safety. This corner becomes a half-field safety. He becomes the flat player. He becomes a flat player. He becomes your Tampa 2 Mike. Okay? That's the structure of what this defense is getting to. So when he fakes to Jamar Chase and he bites and he's moving to the half field, this is called the honey hole, right? The Bengals hit it a couple of times this game. Here's one of them. Okay? Get Jake Browning off his spot. He sets up. And now you got a pretty good, you know, explosive play um, down the sidelines. And again, this is the most offense they've had up to this point in the game, right? It's a boring first half. Then you come right back. And I love the simplicity of what um, the Bengals do because it always centers around your best players. Okay. This is a play called X spot. And what you're going to get here is it's a play that most coordinators that I've played for have in their hip pocket for teams who pressure, right? I got to get the ball out. I can't just take three and five step drops all game and expect like big plays down the field. If they're going to heat me up, let's just deal. Let you know, let's let's carve them up like by little thousand little cuts, right? So this is called X spot spacing. He's just going to get to the inside edge of the numbers and sit. He's free release on a wide route. Okay? So it's only a five man protection. Tight end's going to sit over the ball. He's going to expand here, and he's either going to run a go route or like, like a version of an Omaha out route. And the play is literally, you know, left to right on the radio dial, right, or pure progression play across the field, however you want to say it. And, again, love the play call for the situation. You, he's been sacked a bunch. He's been hit a bunch. So we get in the second half, and now what are we seeing? This is the first time they've really moved the ball. They moved Jake off his spot. Now let's throw a quick game. Here you go. If Jamar Chase is open, give it to him. Oh, well, the hook player moved with Jake Browning's eyes. Now he's doubled. So if he moves, now who's open? The tight end, right? So it's a very simple play. Very good eyes. You know, Jake Browning probably has – 20 reps of this play through training camp and OTAs, right? It's, it's, it's a day one or two install type play, but it's built for situations like this. Very good design, good play call based on the situation, and it's another 14-yard gain. And now all of a sudden, the Bengals are moving the football. Let's reset the situation real quick because we opened that three-yard gain to Joe Mixon. That was on second and four. Run it on the next play to create the first down. That Tenor Hudson sideline catch, 14 yards. The very next play was this 14-yard catch to Irv Smith. Colt, take me through the next play. Second and eight here. This is the, this is the best we've looked all day. Okay, we're going to motion over from a three-by-one formation to a two-by-two two formation. What has Minnesota done this whole game? They've brought pressure. They've, they've brought heat. And they're not going to show you what the coverage is on the back end until you get the ball in your hands. So. Let's call plays that we're very comfortable with. X spot spacing. Uh, pump the flat to verticals. Like I can I can read that out off my spot. Now, you know, this is one of my favorite, favorite concepts. Okay. We've talked about this before. 
This is kind of a staple in the Shanahan, McVay, Kevin O'Connell, Zach Taylor world, right? Where he's going to motion up and sit. And then if he's matched by the hook player, he can he can break out. On this motion, okay, Josh, you tell me, do you have an idea of what the coverage is right here? <laughs> right? Because I don't. I yeah, see. It's, I mean, it's, it's one of those unique three safety looks that are almost trotting out there. Cole. Yeah, I see three bigs in here. I see like three versions of like a linebacker safety. So a six man box. This is the yeah. West Virginia three, three, five defense, right? Cool, cool. Yeah. It's like, it's like confusion, right? So, okay. Let's, let's call this play, right? You're going to run here. He's a sit route could potentially break out if he's matched. He's just running a simple inside dig. What this guy's version is, is if it is true too deep, you can take the middle. If it's single high, you take the inside shoulder of the nearest defender. And then he's going to take his time knowing that he's like fourth in the progression. He's going to run a deep curl. He's checking in protection and run a swing. So really, this is your concept. This would be one. This would be one A. Okay. This would be two. And here's three. Okay. So very much like X spot spacing. This is also a right to left, you know, read, a pure progression read, right? It, set your feet to throw these guys. If it's not there, reset to the curl, reset to the swing, right? It's a, it's a simple play. And these are the plays that are getting Jake Browning in rhythm, okay? Now, at the snap, this is a, this is a cool way to get to cover two, right? At the snap, now, now it plays out. Here's your, here's your deep half safety. Here's your other deep half safety. Now your post safety, he becomes the Tampa 2 mic. So he would be the mic that carries in Tampa 2 on a normal Tampa 2. Now this is we call it like Tampa 2 post safety, Tampa 2 free safety, Tampa 2 free, something something like so so now here's your here's your uh cover 2 corner right here. Here's your cover 2 corner right there. Hook player, hook player and he's really filling the gap as a fourth rusher, but just it's really like a drop eight version of Tampa 2. Okay. Now it doesn't really affect Jake Browning. He's just playing it out. Like I know my read. There's one, he gets matched by the hook player and there's a hard corner. Now the window for my best player is wide open, great throw, and it's another 15 yard gain. Now the good second part of this and the reason I know Jake Browning has had a lot of reps of this is because watch his eyes at the top of his drop. When he looks left, he makes this guy, he takes this guy out of the play. Remember I told you that's the Tampa two Mike. So usually the Tampa two Mike runs with speed. He's going to turn to speed. This is the tight end. Okay. He's not worried about speed by the tight end. He's worried about speed from the receiver. So when he runs full speed through there, he is responsible to carry him. So when Jake Browning gets to the top of his drop and looks at speed, it makes the Tampa 2 Mike, which is the post safety, turn with him to open up this big window here. He looks left, and now this guy, playing off his eyes, turns to speed as opposed to this way, which now here's the window to throw the football. Well, no comeback is possible. Thought the first touchdown on the board. Colt, take me into this touch throw to T. Higgins in the back corner on the first play of the fourth quarter. Again, heading into the fourth quarter, they are down 17-3 to three at this moment. This is, our, this is our most efficient drive of the day. And we hit, we hit on this earlier. The adjustment that Callahan and Zach Taylor made during the second half was they went more 12 personnel. And – for whatever reason, this week, when they put two tight ends on the field, it created five down uh, fronts from the Vikings. They brought five big players in. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And now that only gives you basically one to two linebackers in the rest of your secondary. First play of the fourth quarter, they're down 17 to three. Let's motion the tight end over. Okay. Take a picture of what's going on here. Like nobody motions with the tight end. Okay. Zone. Now I know I got some version of zone coverage. I do have an, a possible threat here, right? 
here's the five rushers, five known rushers. Like, who has him? Okay. If he comes, somebody over here, it becomes three over two. He'll he'll replace, but at worst, it's three over three. Okay. So, and this is a very, very simple play. Okay. All you're going to do here, it's a read on the corner for Jake Browning. Okay. T. Higgins is at the point. He's run the corner route. Jamar Chase is running just a sit route, and the tight end who motion is run to the flat. Okay. If the if the corner jumps the flat at all or settles his feet, you throw the corner. And it you throw it knowing that T. Higgins is going to beat the guy that's off coverage on him. Okay. So really good job by Jake Browning. Okay. He's reading my guy, Byron Murphy. Murphy settles his feet a little bit. And then it's just a really nice touch throw by Browning from the pocket. Again, they went five on five. These five have these five. Joe Mixon's going to come across, block the known rusher, and the read is simple. What does he do? If he backs up and bails, I'm going to throw the flat. If he jumps the flat, I'm going to replace it with the corner and trust that T. Higgins you know, makes the play and gets to his spot. Nice read, nice protection, really high-level play by T. Higgins here. It's one of those situations where, you know, you watch live and you wonder to yourself, like, is Jake Browning actually legit? You know, I mean, over 275 passing yards in his last three starts. I'm sure all of you clicking this video have asked the same question. Like, yeah. is Jake Browning a legit NFL starter? Yeah, I mean, I think... For Jake Browning, um, it's a dream scenario for him, right? To have the likes of Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, um, Joe Mixon, right? Like to step into that role as the backup coming off the bench, like there's not many better situations than that. So he's certainly taking advantage of what he's being able to like step in and play with, right? Like, and I think those guys have responded well to him, and they're and you know they're they're doing a great job. First play of the two minute, right? Look, they're they're down seven. Everybody knows what you got to do. You got to go score a touchdown and tie it up. You're at home, but this defense has lit you up most of the game. Vikings are showing pressure again. Here's your speed guy. He's carrying the inside shoulder of the nearest defender. Here's your you know. Inside curl hook, here's your dig, right? If this guy gets carried out and he attracts to the hook, you have a window right in here to throw, okay? You're really off of the X receiver because there's two defenders here and a lot of grass. So as it plays out, again, it's never the same coverage at the snap as it is post-snap. I would say the inside receiver, I think this is Boyd right here, gets just enough commitment from the strong safety that the window opens up for Browning to throw in. And, again, T. Higgins is that dude. Watch this catch. I mean. And in a way, the throw protects T. Higgins here. The, you know, the throw protects away. him up and away. Just that's trust. Stands in there and takes a shot and a big play in a two-minute drill. One minute later, another big play, third and three. Got to have it. Less than a minute. We get a major pressure look shown once again. Jake Browning has the answers. When you watch this tape, Josh, it's just constant. Like, dude, where's the safety? Like, why is everybody at the Flores line? Flores wants to get him off the field, man. Like, dude, I mean, it's just relentless by yeah. Flores and the Vikings. I remember... You know, I was with the Cardinals and we went up to Minnesota and practiced against these guys during training camp. And we didn't have a whole lot of answers. You know, everything's unscripted. Right. But when we would get in team periods, I would line up and like, like there's pe there's eight people at the line of scrimmage every play. I'm like, <laughs> can you please just, you know, we're practicing against each other. Can you just play quarters or three deep or something where I can like set my feet and throw the. You know, it's just, it's frustrating. It's annoying. Like, 
it's over and over and over. And I imagine like, you know, in these big moments of the game, like that's exactly how, you know, Jake Browning's feeling, but you know, hats off to him and, and his poise for just all day long standing in there. So here we go. Third down. It's a got to have it play. Okay. They want to get the two by two version of what we, what they played uh, earlier in earlier in the half. Okay, so so they, is this is this a hot cult based on him believing more rushers are actually coming? Yet it still works even when they drop into coverage. Yeah. So this he's going to run the bubble, and he is your hot throw. Right. right. So if all these guys come, like that's your that's your answer. Okay. He's going to come and stutter his feet like he's blocking, and they're going to try to get a cheap one up the rail for for a touchdown. Okay. Now, Vikings do a nice job of bailing out. Jake Browning feels it. They bail and stay back. And just this is a nice um, example of Jake Browning just saying, okay, oh, my home run shot's not there. Let me take a breath and just throw it back to the guy who's running bubble because these two defenders bailed. So it's really, it's really a uh, he's here, he's one, he's two. And then on the backside late, he has a dig who's three, but you rarely get to him. Like, And you're full in protection. This is a seven-man protection because, obviously, it's a big-time play. Like, we got to have the first. I need protection. You know they're going to come after you. Tight end's in, and the running back stays in, right? So those are really your options. And I just think it's a nice job when he feels a couple guys bail. He's like, okay, I take a breath, and now – I think this guy can get the first, gives him a nice ball, and he does. Whenever you see unexpected performances like this, a name popping up like Jake Browning Colt, uh, there always has to be a few moments of magic that are maybe one in 10, or in this case, one in 50. Uh, they happen, and they're part of the story. This throw to T. Higgins, everyone's going to have ingrained into their brain uh, and maybe propels the Bengals into the playoffs this year. Who knows? Fourth quarter, second and 10, 48 seconds left, down seven, right? We got to start taking shots at the end zone, okay? And what do you know? I mean, look at all these purple guys at the line of scrimmage, okay? Very easily could be a cover zero look, right? Three over three. He's technically over the tight end, right? Either he has the back or he has the back, depending on which side he releases, okay? That's what I would be thinking if I was the quarterback right now. And I think he is, right? He's saying, can, 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 can. Like, we got to keep the tight end in. I think the tight end was going to go out on a route. Mm -hmm. And when Jake Browning says, okay, guys, I don't know, but I think it's cover zero. Can, can, right? All that does is keeps the tight end in protection, and the running back in protection, right? That gives you a seven-man um, pro, and you're really playing man coverage everywhere else. And it is. So he's right. He guessed right. Cover zero. The only difference is this guy. When he sees the tight end block out, he frees himself up for any, like, crossing routes or post routes that he can jump, okay? So – when Browning canned it, the Bengals actually had like a really, really good play call on um, to beat this play, right? So you're going to get an out route here. You're going to get a sit route hook right here. And you're going to get by the point man a corner. Okay. So very similar to the touchdown they threw uh, the first play of the fourth quarter where you're reading yep. the corner. This is the same idea, just a deeper version. Okay, if the corner jumps the out route here, like he's one, then I'm going to replace him with the deeper corner as two with inside leverage. Okay, so when he went can can, he's probably saying good night. I hope that this is cover zero because I have really, really good answers. Okay, so here comes the snap. We know the play and. We don't block it right. Okay. <laughs> now all of a sudden, like if you pause it right here, like he's got him. Yeah. 
if if this guy's not free, he still throws a touchdown right here. Right? Because he has to be this guy. This corner's attracted. He's got him. Like, there's no way he stops this play if the ball, if the ball is thrown in rhythm. Okay? But we mess up. And now you get a Stafford-esque type throw off your back foot from the 30-yard line. And it's not super accurate. It's just kind of in the vicinity. So now, instead of being in the pocket, now this guy gets involved. Right? That ball stays up. It's floated in the air. And now he can react to it. Right? If he throws it from the pocket, T. Higgins is standing by himself. But he throws up a prayer. I mean, I, I got to think that Jake Browning's like, this might be like a throwaway. This, right. isn't, this isn't like I think he's going to catch it type throw. And this play is – that's an all-time play right there. Not only the catch, but, I mean, the go-go gadget arms to extend over the pylon, <laughs> like, that's unbelievable. <laughs> but it's, one of those, it's one of those things that just watching nearly every offense across the league every single week, it's such a simple statement, but great players make great plays, you know? Great and those can play. be the difference in – this either being an interception or an incomplete pass or sending this game into overtime and a win. And it's just like this one individual effort in this one moment of a game that had 70 offensive snaps into one play made by T Higgins as a result between a win and a loss. This is really nothing short of like extraordinary. Well, there's one more of those extraordinary individual efforts. Uh, we go into overtime. Both teams have a chance. That means a field goal is all that is needed. And it brings us into 5.30 left on the clock. Another third and nine. It's another one of these veteran wide receivers that turns a solid play into a massive play. All right. Third and nine, right? Approaching midfield. The nickel up here showing like he might pressure. You got a post high look. You know, kind of feel like it's going to be heat. You know, the, the, the other issue that you deal with right here is you got your best rusher, Danielle Hunter, lined up over the center. Right. And when teams do that, I'm always like, ah, oh, I don't love I don't love that, right? It make it, I feel uncomfortable when that happens. You know there's gonna be games, TEs, ETs, some version of stunts up front where like the ball's gotta come out. You also know it's third and nine, a critical situation of the game, okay? Again, same play that we've seen two times already in this game, right? Now we're doing it out of a stack formation, okay? He's going to get a chip, and he's to the flat. He's running up. He's the hook. He's going to expand outside the edge of the, outside edge of the numbers, and he's running the dig, okay? Simple concept, simple play. We've got a lot of reps of this. He's If it's cover two... He's going to inside release because when he inside releases, now this safety has to attract him. If he outside releases, this safety's eyes free up to take this ball away. Okay, so on the details of the route and the concept and the play, like this is very, very detailed and very, very good. Okay, Jake Browning at the snap realizes that it's cover two, so he's out of it. Right now, now I'm now I'm over here. Okay, he has it, right? He hits his back foot. Nice job by the running back picking up Harrison Smith off the edge. Right? Right here, like there's a big window here. This guy runs runs him off. Right? This side's dead. You know, you can throw a, a touch ball floater in there and you're going to have it. So now what we talked about with Daniel Hunter on the center, like not a great matchup, right? You, you pay your left tackles to block Daniel Hunter, okay? So when the Vikings <laughs> move him over the center, it's like center's got a hard job. Like this now this makes it a lot harder, especially with no help. So nice job by Jake Browning moving off his spot. He knows he had the throw, right? He's looking right at it. But when he moves, he relocates his guy, 
And, you know, this is a very dicey throw, but results in a massive play in this game. Big time catch, big time play. The instant reaction from the sideline is something special. Sideline's too. crazy. Hilton's over here going nuts. Right? Watch T. Higgins. Like the best player in this game today. Watch our watch our guy. I mean, he knows. He knows. <laughs> he knows we just won the game. Yeah. Right? Like anytime the Bengals can come out on top when, you know, their star receiver Jamar Chase goes down, like it's a luxury to have guys like Tyler Boyd, to guys have to have guys like T. Higgins who can just immediately step into that role and fill the void. And you know, you probably miss a little bit, but those guys are going to make plays, and they certainly did in this game. But again, great job by you know Jake. He knows that that guy's open. He just can't, he can't step into it right there. Flushes out, goes back to him. What a play! Moments of magic. That's what you need. That's what you need. Cole, I love this episode of Scheme. Um, we got your personal experience here. I will say it just from watching. Uh, I could not imagine, envision a worse defense to face maybe in your fourth career NFL start than all the funky pressures that Brian Flores in terms of showing people, dropping them and coming from different angles. And Jake plus Zach Taylor and company handled it extremely well. So... All of you out there, thank you for watching. This has been another fantastic clinic from Colt McCoy. We'll be back next week. In fact, Christmas week, a little something special, a present under the tree. We're starting off with NFL draft prospects, Drake May up first. Can't wait for that. One of my favorite times of the year, a new wave, a new influx of young passers entering the league, and we'll cover many of them for you. All right. See you all next week.